What's up everybody? Welcome back to our $5 million garage studio. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of an episode here on Abina sipping sodas. It's, uh, it's something that I found through the Pravada Cigar Club. Um, a guy on there, uh, I read into it a little bit and uh, really interesting the way he came about it. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of talking about that, a little bit of talking about some other topics that I got in mind. Hope you're ready. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's do this. Let's do it. All right, so the Abina sipping sodas. Now we had one a couple days ago. I think it was a cedar wood. And let me tell you, convincing him that we should give this a try was a little bit kind of interesting because we weren't sure what they would even taste like. You know, we're used to, you hear the word soda, you either think soda water, like, uh, you know, like White Claw and yeah, stuff Perrier, like that. Perrier, stuff like that. And then, you know, you think soda, you think Coke, Pepsi, yep. Mountain Dew, Sprite, you know, all the, you know, Dr. Pepper, all the traditionals. Where these are a, uh, a soda that is basically like this one is, the first one we did was cherry yep. and moss oak moss and, and earth. There was something else, yeah. And something else. And, but like this one that we're going to do tonight is coffee, vanilla, and chocolate, and nuts. So it's some, some combinations that when you think soda, you don't automatically think those flavors. Um, I mean, vanilla is pretty traditional to sodas because you got like vanilla Coke, vanilla Pepsi, all that kind of stuff. But the rest of them, you don't really think chocolate, nuts, or coffee when yeah. you think soda. And I think, uh, I think he uh, uses like agave or something else, not just sugar to sweeten it, which they're not overly sweet. He designed them specifically to accompany like cigars or they're non-alcoholic. Um, design them for like cigars or for like when you're having a steak or something along those lines where you don't necessarily want to drink alcohol but you want something with a robust flavor and um, I tell you the um, the the one we had the other day was incredible and it kind of blew us away because we didn't know a what to expect and we went in with kind of lowered expectations and it, they were exceeding so we'll definitely give we're definitely gonna be giving these a try they're perfect for you know, if you have a bar, if you have somebody who's designated driver, or let's say you got work in the morning and you don't want to, you know, get too drunk, so you take this. But I also found the chair, the other one, the, uh, I think it was Cedarwood, I think it was absolutely perfect. If you make a mixed drink with it, you could throw some rum in there and it would have been all amazing. But um, I think as long as this one keeps up with the tradition of the other one, I think, uh, I think I'm going to keep these in our bar. So... Yeah, it uses organic aguave nectar, organic sugar, cold brew, cold brew coffee, stuff like that. I don't think this one is quite as good as the other one, but it's it's still good. Well, it's better than soda. I definitely thought that cherry one was just that cherry bag is so good. This one's interesting. I don't think it's as good as the cedarwood one, but. You definitely get the, the chocolate and, and the nuts and the vanilla. You know, on the second sip, it's even better, actually. The first sip was a little, I don't know, man. I like that, too. Not quite picking up the coffee as strong. No. Um, definitely the vanilla and chocolate is strong. I get that a nut, little bit of nut nutty on taste the on the end, kind of like an aftertaste that... It's kind of nutty, but I'm not hanging up the coffee. I still like it. I mean, it's still pretty good. But yeah, if you're wanting to have a nice day, enjoy a good cigar that you can pair up with something you're not wanting to drink and you're not wanting to have coffee, you want something a little a little more refreshing, a little bit sweeter, um, definitely to, definitely not bad. I mean, I would, I would so take these. So the teak wood, I would, I would say, like, let's say you want to make a mixed drink, I would put, like, wild... Uh, Wild Turkey 101, some something like a little cherry kind of thing in it. This one, I think it would be pretty good with the yeah. double oak. I actually think this is a strong enough flavor that it pairs well with this, which is a very yeah. strong, robust uh, cigar. Yeah, and uh, it pairs very well. It's not the cigar is no overpowering to the to the drink. I had one of these uh, earlier with some monkey shoulder, and it was technically it was a little overpowering. Shoulder. I'm going to show it's kind of a citrusy, kind of lighter whiskey. Um, the yeah. more you, this is definitely a better match. The more you drink it, the more you start tasting the coffee. That's actually pretty good. 
Um, that first sip, I was a little, I, I, didn't, it, I didn't love it. The more I'm drinking it, the more the flavors are starting to open up. I actually like it now. That, that's, that's pretty good. All right, so we're going to get back to the soda. But for right now, I wanted to change gears just a little bit. So we were just having a conversation before we came out here, and I, there's some stuff I want to address. The main point being, I don't think there's such a thing as bad music, sir. I, 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 I have to tell you. There's good music. <laughs> and then there's music that I don't really think is necessary to listen to. Okay, well, that's one thing. We could sit here and say, yeah, there's music I don't want to listen to that I don't like. You know, there's quite a, eh, there's not really much because I'm kind of like the open-minded one of us. But I no, don't think there's that's necessarily not that's bad not, music. That's not true. I listen to every genre of music. K-pop. And I like some, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> See, K-pop. He's not a K-pop. Look, I haven't listened to enough of it to say it's all bad. I've just listened to enough to know that it's not my jam. It's not my thing. See, see, he just t- took a U-turn. I don't think he just... I think he's a little embarrassed. No, no, I'm not. There's, there's <laughs> things I don't like. like. I'm not a big boy band. I'm not a big K-pop. I'm not a big Spice Girls. I'm not big on Taylor Swift and, and any of that kind of vanilla kind of, you know, what I consider to just be overall boring music. Sir, you um, said you don't I get like a little NSYNC. more. Yeah, but the thing is, I like Justin Timberlake's music when he became solo. I just didn't vibe the whole boy band bop doop bullshit. It's just not my thing. So now you're gonna now you're gonna claim it's because of your age. No, nothing to do with age. It has to do with taste. Okay. So the, okay, you can call it taste all you want, but it's still not necessarily bad music. It's just something you don't like. It's not bad at all. It's not bad. It's just not good. See, I think I'm going to keep you guys around more because uh, the more you guys are around, the more he takes those 180s from saying, no, that music shit versus, no, hey, there's no bad music. No, no, don't, don't let him fool you. Sitting here, sitting here talking bad about T-Swizzle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan. What about I mean, you? she's probably a lovely girl. Nothing against the person. <laughs> I don't know her. She might be the sweetest I mean, person you ever music. see. I don't know her either. Her music isn't good. See, I, I mean, there might be one song she sings that I'm like, okay, if it comes on, I'm not immediately switching the channel. But I would say 90% of her music, when it comes on, I change the channel. Hurts my soul. But I haven't heard them all. So there might be a couple that I was like, ah. You know, same with like Justin Timberlake. Um, who's the other guy we Justin were talking about Bieber earlier? We were talking Justin about. Bieber. I like some of his music. But not so much that I'm going to go buy an album or I'm going to download the songs. If See, they come on, I just, I won't change the channel. Listen to this guy talking about buying albums. Well, I, I mean, you I do don't buy because, but we pay for Spotify, which means we bought all the <laughs> stuff we listen to. Well, you we do buy for. vinyl. And I do buy vinyl. Yeah, you and do buy vinyl. I don't have okay, I got to re- retrace on that one. He does buy vinyl. I love vinyl. Uh, to me, that's the only pure way. It's the best way. Now, unless you're in the John, you're in the financial bracket to have real real but you know, most of us aren't um so vinyl is pretty much where you know us that love the a little bit more of a pure sound what the hell is real to real look it up google it bro google i don't it. have my phone we're doing a show <laughs> real real explain real this to, real to the people is, who um, of the digital age it's basically film or uh, music on a strip like kind of like film oh like film it's a it's it's, a, it's not film but it's kind of Look, I don't know all the details. I'm not an expert on explaining it, but it's it's basically the way they originally record music is reel to reel. I thought they recorded on 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 vinyl. No, they lay it down on vinyl, but they don't record on vinyl typically. I don't hmm. believe. I think it goes reel to reel to vinyl. Now, I'm like I said, I'm not a music expert, so Google it if you want to know the, in, the history and ins and outs of I how it's made it done. Shit up. Um, but if you want to know what real to real is, watch movies like Pulp Fiction, um, when they're in the house, when he's picking her up for their date mm-hmm. night, she puts on a song on a real to real. It has two big reels. Yeah. It goes okay. from one through the machine, so, almost like an old real to real film. Like all, it looks into like the film, other. yeah. Okay. And it's a purest sound. And they're super expensive. To buy those units is crazy expensive for me. I think I bought, like, I think my record player is like, you know, what? Twelve hundred bucks or something, um, my turntable, and uh, that's a lot for me. 
that, that, that to me that that's a lot. But I, I had graduated and wanted to get away from having a suitcase style or a multi-use. I wanted just a turntable, and uh, so I got the uh, Fluence with the acrylic platter. It's a fucking, or a freaking excellent <laughs> record player. You're gonna hear a couple bleeps nice, on this yeah, one. Yeah, I've had a few drinks over the day. Sorry. Um, my cursing goes up the more I have to drink. <laughs> and uh, we had some awesome. family over earlier with the grandbaby and everybody. We all had some drinks. And, well, well, grandbaby didn't I might have, have more than I needed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, now, I, I, to me, the best thing, the best way for me, I, I mean, I love my friends, I love my family, but if I am at home alone um, and I'm cooking dinner or just sitting around the house or cleaning or just, you know, doing something, I love to put on the old vinyls. And uh, <laughs> I want you to picture him, this guy. In a cocktail moment, just do 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 do, sliding across the kitchen floor in his underwear and a dress shirt, because that's what I'm picturing right now. I don't know about anybody else, but yeah, the only difference between <laughs> well, it's not cocktail. It was uh, what was that movie that that Tom? I thought Cruise, it was cocktail. Risky oh, risky business. risky business. The only difference between that movie and how I dance when I'm home alone, jamming out to some you know Dark Side of the Moon or yeah. Jelly Roll or Adele is I don't have the underwear. I mean, I put the dress shirt on, I got the socks, you know, but I like to go free bird. Oh, so you're, so as Haley would say, you're raw dog. Yeah, I like the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> kind of feel. <laughs> oh boy, that's interesting. She get deep. <laughs> so I definitely would have to say when it comes to music, I'm not, you know, a $1,500, you know, a turntable kind of guy. Um, you're not really a music person. No, I'm a movie TV guy. You like books. you like like Taylor Swift. We all know that because you talk about her incessantly, and you like like musicals like Hamilton and yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But typically, you're not a music guy. Like you don't listen to music. Like I listen to music whenever I'm not actively like watching YouTube or watching TV or I have music on. Yeah. If I'm driving, I'm either listening to an audio book or I'm listening to music. If I'm working out, music. If I'm working out, out is the exception. Working out. If I'm going to run to down music. to get my haircut, music. Um, sometimes at work, if I'm out back working where I'm by myself, it's on my iPhone. I just turn it on, put it on speaker, and I just let it blare out of my pocket while I do stuff. If I'm cooking at the house or anything like that, music. If friends come over and we're hanging out having drinks, the turntable going or the or the Bluetooth yeah. music because the turntable will also the speakers, not the turntable, but the speakers will do Bluetooth through them. So I can run the turntable through them, or I can run just Bluetooth, turn my phone on. That's a little easier for parties, because you don't have to worry about flipping the album or anything like that. Um, so you have less, you don't have to, to, to monitor it. Where records are, you know, you get about three to six songs, and you gotta flip the tape, you flip the turntable, um, flip the record, whatever you wanna say. And uh, so that's more of a, an experience. It's kinda like, to me, like so, smoking cigars and smoking, or drinking whiskey is, this is an experience, and so is listening to records. But and it slows you down. When I'm uh, when I'm at the gym, it has to be music. When I'm lifting weights, it's got to be music. If I'm doing cardio, which I don't know, really don't don't like and don't do often, um, it's audiobooks or I'll watch a video or something like that. Um, but if I'm cooking, if I'm driving, especially if I'm driving alone. If I'm in the car alone, I'm listening to an audiobook or I'm listening to a podcast. Podcast more than anything. Yeah, pretty much that's, um, it depends on, it, it, when I'm over there, a lot of times, sometimes it'll be podcasts, but a lot of times it's audiobooks because we don't have the best reception service like 5, 4G, 3G, stuff like that. So it's just easier to download audiobooks and listen to those. And I'm just now getting into, pod, into podcasts. I think when I decided to get back into photography, it's when I started listening to podcasts. I got a few podcast channels I listen to that, that are um, done by some from some really excellent photographers, and I listen to them. And you know, you just can't. Anytime that you find you want to go into an industry or into a, into a something, the best thing you can do is listen to the best in that industry and listen to people who have put their time and their dues in and, and glean whatever you can from them. It's only going to help you be better to see it from from other angles and views. And then the rest is just putting the work in, taking the shots, um, you know, whatever creative outlet it is. Um, yeah. Just just chasing it, man. And you've got to do the work. If you don't do the work, you're never going to be good. Yeah. 
Um, I tend to have hyper fixations on things, which obviously you know. But um, you know, like uh, there's um, there's podcasts I listen to, like uh, I love to learn things. So there's one called American History Tellers, where it's all about like professionally produced. It's all real fancy, real educational, incredible, incredible podcast. But it's more like listening to a show versus listening to a podcast. It's very good. But then there's a bunch of whiskey ones, a couple of cigar ones. There's a couple of uh, lifestyle ones I listen to. Then there's a couple of comedy ones. Um, I really, uh, <coughs> I, I, I have a whole bunch that I listen to. But then again, the, the audio books. But music is not, we listen to music in the, in the car. You know, like, I, you know, we joke around and say that I only listen to like Taylor Swift and stuff. I listen to pretty much everything from, you know, rock. Um, so I wouldn't say metal, but the, like the the one the couple things I really am not a fan of, I'm not a fan of mumble rap. I, I can't I can't do the mumble rap. Yeah, I'd say that'd probably be my. I mean, I love hip hop. Like love uh, hip hop, especially '80s and '90s back when you know that was you know like uh, shit. I can't even think of it right now. Um, Run DMC. Yeah, you got, yeah. Um, um, you got Ice Cube. You got Nelly. Nelly. You got, uh, Ludacris, uh, um, Little Wayne you, is one you why like. Why am I drawing a blank on all this? Um, Flo Rider and... Uh, I mean, that's you know, more all like, those guys. That's like 2000s. Doesn't matter. All of it. I yeah. love it. Um, the more modern, I like some of it too. Uh, Eminem, incredible. Eminem, 80s rock. Um, Little Wayne, all those guys. Yeah. But I also love everything all the way down to like Leonard Cohen and Jelly Roll and... Yeah. Uh, and uh, Rag and Bone Man and... Ted Swims, and See, uh, then I, know, I go all I the way into Disturbed, and, yeah. and Slipknot, and punch. Korn, and Alice in Chains, and, uh, and Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne, all, all time one of my favorites, Ozzy, and then I'll go even as far as Clint Black, and uh, what's the one I really love, man? Not Clint Black, that's not the one I wanted, I wanted, uh, uh, Kane Brown. No, The Man in Black, well I love Kane Brown. Yeah. But, um, Johnny, Cash. Johnny Cash is one of my, love I, mean, I grew Cash. up on Johnny Cash when I was a truck driver. I loved it, and um, there's something about that that uh, that soulful, folky kind of music. Because I'm also, you know, Scandinavian Irish, so I love like Dropkick Murphys and all that Irish kind of rock. I love folk music that's kind of that, you know, bar music or drinking music. Love that. Um, I love all of that. And I listen to it a lot. Uh, so I, I'm, 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 it's very weird. One of my favorite things to do is <laughs> I, I'm a bit of an agitator in life. I don't know why because he I'm is really a, a nice guy. But sometimes I like to be on the Harley, and I like to be in a in a highly financial area where a lot of a lot of blue bloods with the tops down and the fancy cars. And then I'll be on the bike, and I'll have like you know Little Wayne, like as loud as the <laughs> speakers on my bike will go, or or some other hip hop, and I'll just crank it as loud as I can, and and I kind of love it because you know they'll slowly roll the windows up and <laughs> look over, and I don't look like somebody who'd be listening to that per se. I don't have that uh, hip hop yeah. look. I'm just an average looking dude. Um, I guess bikerish. I guess yeah, would be the definitely. best. Um, Barbarian. So it's fun. It's, it's fun to kind of get that response from people. And it's probably not right. It's probably an asshole move, but I just kind of get a kick out of it. It is funny. Though. I I can totally picture you doing it. I haven't seen it, but I can probably picture it. It's very you. Yeah, it probably is. Probably should work on that. It's probably some inner growth I need to do or something. Or, hey, maybe in the comments, maybe there's some of you guys out there that feel the same way. You just like to kind of rock the boat a little bit on people that are just pretentious or, or at least come across that way. And See, just kind of be like, you know what? I don't adhere to the norm. I'm my own self. I like my own shit. I don't care if I look the part or act the part. If I like it, I like it. And I don't care about other people. All right. So there we go. That's perfect. You know, so we're going to go in the comments. All right. So I've seen this not on YouTube video. So let's do this. In the comments, I want you guys to go ahead and write whether you want to buck the system his way. Or if you're more of, I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. I'm listening to what I want to listen to and don't care about any looks. Put don't care in my column. We'll see. What, we'll see what the people think. Nobody cares when you listen to Taylor Swift, though. 
I guarantee. I guarantee. <laughs> see, look. So when Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey started dating and the whole NFL thing and all that stuff came out, at that point I was like, you know what? I'm, I think I'm a, Twi- a Swifty. I like Taylor Swift, blah, blah, blah. I started finding out what. I, I started finding out what. No. Absolutely not. That's what I'm trying to say. I started finding out what Swifties are, and I'm like, oh, oh I am not one of those. <laughs> like, I like Taylor Swift's music. They're, they're, Olivia Rodrigo is another one that I really like her music. Right? I'm in an angry teenage girl music genre right now. Love it. Hailstorm is another one that's really good that I don't think you would enjoy. Um, rock, angry, angsty girl music. I freaking love it. Um, and then you got Paramore is another one that I really enjoy. Don't get me wrong. I grew up in, in the you know in my teenage like early teens like sixteen eighteen you know listening to the Bangles and and uh, Lita Ford and you know it wasn't I'm not opposed to, to female artists. No, just, it's just it, um, I think I'm uh, not a pop guy. I'm not a big pop person. There's some songs that are pop we that I've liked. I am for but sure. I'm just that's just not a genre I ever. I ever really fell into it's just it's not one I really listen to um, I mean art I mean e- even even the stuff we're talking about now we're both so eclectic art the the stuff we listen to is such a wide range I mean it, it's funny because a lot of the stuff you listen to, there's some overlap but there's also the complementary aspect of it the music you listen to I I like as well but the stuff that there's stuff that you listen to I don't like and there's stuff that I listen to you don't so it's very complimentary. Well, like, when Jenny and I go on road trips, if we're on the Harley, she'll listen to my heavy metal. And more the darker type music. But she doesn't like it, per se. No, she doesn't. Unless we're on the bike. But she likes, like, 80s, what would you say, 80s and 90s hip-hop? Like, R&B. R&B. 80s and 90s R&B, that, that, that kind of smooth, love song kind of stuff. I don't. There are songs I like, but for the most part, I don't like that music. Um, it's just not my jam. I think it's a little too slow, a little too sappy sometimes. But when we go on road trips, we listen to it, we sing them. I know all those songs. I grew up listening, hearing those songs. So we have a good time. She'll DJ, and I'll drive, and we'll just karaoke the whole way wherever we're going. Um, there, are, But also there are groups that I like that that some people are surprised by, like Luther Vandross. Oh, yeah. I love Luther. Uh, the Isley Brothers. You know, um, I don't know if you know them. Uh, Aaron Neville, love him. Uh, Tracy Chapman, amazing. I, you know, I think if I had to put a lot of the artists I like in one category, it's unique voices. Yeah. Somebody that has a voice that is uniquely theirs. The minute you hear them, you know it's them. You don't mistake them for anyone else. That's their sound. That's their voice. Well, I mean, and the, all those people, Ozzy, Aaron, uh, all you know, all of them that I just mentioned, all of them fall into that category of voices that you do not mistake for anyone else. Now, there's some people that can do cover music on them. It sounds similar, but if you listen to it for a few minutes, you go, yeah, that's not them. It's just not them. I mean, it goes into, like, we, we talk about it all the time. Joaquin Phoenix is like Johnny Cash. Oh, yeah, he oh. he did an amazing job in that movie. Um, even, I, even man I literally think he time. might be my favorite male actor. As far as it's gotta be close, you know, the, I have actors that I like because they're action stars or because they've got that you know overly top, over the top, cool vibe going on. But then there's there's actors I like because they're character actors, they're amazing actors. No matter what role you give them, they just sell it. Yeah, um, I'm really big into the, the psychological part of life, like the way people think, the way people react, um, upbringings, and, and just everything about that. So when I hear Someone that can get into a movie role and become the mentality or the the psychological side of the character they're playing. I am just totally in love with that. The biography pieces are so difficult. Like, I have been watching all weekend to watch Napoleon. I, I can't wait. To I see haven't it. turned it on yet. It's on the it's on the TV. I can watch it at any time I want, but I haven't sat down and watched it because I want it to be a day when there's no distractions. Nothing going on. I can watch just it really focus through. into it. And I'm hoping it's somewhat true to history. I don't like it when they stray too far and it yeah. just becomes, you know, a little too much. I'm uh, looking forward to that. But yeah, too. that's with, definitely with him being the actor he is, and, and he's the way I love it's his gotta, movies. I mean, it, it, he's gonna crush it. I've mentioned that in one other, like the portrayal he did of the Joker was by yeah. far the only. I mean, my favorite Joker to date was him. 
I mean, some people like Jared Leto. Some people like I, some of the older actors. Um, I, I thought Jared Leto would have been incredible Leto, Leto. if it was a Joker movie and he didn't belong in Suicide Squad. Sorry, a little passion. I just think Joaquin Phoenix is... I think oh, they're, they're different Jokers. I mean, like, you know, when you we, we talk about the comic books and stuff, the different ages and... well. Totally different Joker. I think the difference in the Jokers is the same thing we said about the difference in Batman's and some yeah. of the other superheroes. You have the comic book style movies that come out that are very true to the old fashioned comic books that are a little more um, silly or yeah. lighthearted, even like the Silver actually. Age. Um, and yes, they fall into a very good character of the original character. I tend to like movies that stray a little bit outside of the what it's always been. And go more for the what the psychological mindset of those characters would be. Like the Batman should be a dark and disturbed man. I mean, mm-hmm. with what happened to him as a child and what he'd lived through and how it affected him. I think he would be a somewhat borderline violent, Psychotic. very dark, um, disturbed individual. The same with like uh, Deadpool, uh, the, the Joker. Um, I think those people have a lot of psychological issues. And I think when you bring that into a movie... You just make it a better movie. Yes, yeah. it's, it's definitely just Build not depth of character. It's not a fluff piece. It's not yeah. you know a, a just a feel good or just a ooh look it's it's fun. It's not a Hollywood blockbuster type movie. Yeah. I've never been a fan of those. I've watched them because some of them are good, like um, you know Men in Black and all those. They're, they're they're entertaining, but they're not my favorite movies because they are just big blockbusters. Yeah, there's no depth it's to the characters. Yeah, there's no depth to the characters. And I mean, we we talked about we talked about this before. There's so many like, uh, there's so many movies like there a lot of remakes, so many remakes, and a lot of people complain about it. A lot of people are like, oh, they're doing remakes and they can't come up with anything original. There's a reason they're doing remakes because everybody who bitches about it is still gonna go see it. You know, like I can't wait for Roadhouse. I'm looking forward to that because I think it's gonna be great. But then you look at stuff like the the Man from Uncle, which is something you said you weren't familiar with. I, I never did. The, I never knew much about the Man from Uncle. I've heard the name, like I've heard it yeah. talked about, but I I don't I couldn't tell you what it's about or, or anything like that. It, you know what it makes me think of? What is the one that is like all the the uh, I know what you're talking about. All the, the old new, guys, like the the, new, the 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 European, the English um, gentlemen that are like. Spies. Um, if you're, I think, I think you're what, talking about Kingsman. I think Kingsman. You're talking about the Kingsman. Exactly. I am talking about the Kingsman. Yeah. But I, I love the Kingsman. I like too. the Kingsman. I thought it was awesome. But to me, the Kingsman is good. But I am a bigger fan of like the Bourne movies yeah. and, and and James Bond and Mission Impossible. Those are all better, even though I do like the Kingsman. Um, it's a it's a different type. Yeah, it's. it's I think good. you. I think you would really like the man. The men from. Or is it man from? It's either the man or the men from Uncle. I can't remember. I'm gonna have to check it out. It's really. I mean, it's got Henry Cavill in it. I mean, he's. But even amazing. like, even like the Fight Club, one of my all-time yeah. favorite movies. It's it's a deeply psychological, or you know, it's there's there's a lot to it. It's, it's a psychological movie. You should check out his book. The first the first time I watched it, I was young and I didn't get the psychological aspect of it. I wasn't thinking along that lines. I was back in my younger years and I. Didn't I didn't think about stuff like that, and uh, and I mean, it was just a, it was good. It was a good movie, um, but it wasn't until the second time I watched it that I that everything clicked. I'm like, oh, such a better movie because I was the first time I watched it. I'm like, eh, it's all right, you know. But the second time I watched it, I was like, that movie kicked ass. Every time I watch it, I see something new. Yeah. Every time. Um, I mean, there's other movies that go along that same idea. Like you have The Usual Suspects, another incredible movie. Um, I know there's a movie I don't think like you've seen. It's called Lucky Number Eleven. It's a, uh, it's with uh, John McClane. Um, oh my god! Oh, you mean Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis, and um, that's an incredible. It's got everybody in that one actually. The Lucky Number Eleven is one you would love. It's a great movie. Like I liked Seven. Seven's I another seven great was psychological. Awesome. Of course, I'm, more, I'm a Morgan Freeman fan, so Mo- it's easy much. to love anything he's in. He's a uh, Outstanding actor. Morgan um, Freeman's in Slevin too. I like. Fucking uh, Slevin. Along um, came a spider. That was a good one. All of the everything from Silence of the Lambs all through all the heck uh, Lecter movies. Uh, I love them. The yeah. Hannibal Lecter, yeah. I loved all of them. Um, yeah. Even the Red Dragon, which had him at a, was a mental, mental 
more of a smaller part for him, minuscule part for him. Uh, I loved it. Um, I like kind of dark movies. I like yeah. Even comedy, I tend to lean more towards the, the dark comedy, dark comedy yeah. and the and the abstract kind of comedy more than the slapstick or the right in your face silliness. Um, My, you know, some of those are good, especially during, say, during the era. Like I loved when I was younger the the uh, all the uh, shit. Why am I drawing by? Like liar, liar, and oh, Evan like Almighty, the, the, and yeah, Evan Almighty, the Pet yeah. Detective, Ace Bruce Ventura, Almighty. and all those. I love those. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the one with Ricky Bobby. Oh, uh, Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. I loved all those when I was younger, but I eventually grew out of them as I grew older, and now I find them kind of silly. Never liked. I them. like some of the catchphrases and some of the phrases from them, but the movies. Just, some, the catchphrases are good enough, but like you got like. Um, Let's say Talladega Nights, the, the quotes on them are great. I did not like the movie. Um, Ace Ventura, I hated the movie. Um, Dumb and Dumber, hated that. Uh, um, something About Mary, hated. I hate, I don't, I don't enjoy, I'll say slapstick. I don't enjoy, the, the dumb humor. Yeah, the slapstick. Yeah, it's the like s- stuff that, you know, here's one. Like Ocean's 11, 12, and 13. Those are comedy and they're, you know, um, they're more of like the, uh, um, heist kind of movies, but I think the humor in them is hilarious. I, I think that I love those movies. Um, and then you have like, uh, but still, like at the same time, I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith. You got, you know, Clerks, Clerks 2, Mall Rats, Dogma. I love those movies. Dogma was good. I love Dogma. I bothered everybody. I knew <laughs> Big religious. rubber poop monster. <laughs> but I, I love Kevin Smith. I think he's hysterical. I think he's great. Um, I think he. Um, I have um, I've seen part of the He Man and Shira the remake. I think he did an incredible job with the, the, the animated scene. I know that's not your thing, but then um, I, I love Kevin Smith, big fan of his. But the typically like the the dumb I call it just dumb humor. It's not my thing, but yeah, I mean like uh, and then again, some of them I can enjoy for for what they are. I'm also very big in enjoying a movie. If I'm sitting there watching, enjoy it for what it is, even if it's not the movie you, the ones you fall in love with, or you consider your top picks as far as all time great movies. I mean, movies are an escape because you've got to watch them. You have like uh, the one. um, Man, I am drawing blank on so much tonight. I had it in my mind before I started talking. Yeah. Uh, Identity theft. Hilarious movie. Uh, oh, with the throat oh, punching yeah. and, and Kevin. With uh, uh, Melissa McCarthy. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it's just an excellent movie. You know, I'm, I'm also a big, look, you know, being who I am, you know, the basic bitch. Uh, I love romantic comedies, too. I, I, I love them. Like, uh, what's, what's, uh, um, uh, what's Drew Barrymore and... Um, 50 First Dates? Uh, who, who, yeah. Who, what Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Like, all their movies together, Blended, um, Fifty First Dates, The Wedding Singer. I love those movies. I thought I, I think they're, they're, every movie they've made is great. Um, Sweet Home Alabama is another one that I like. Failure to Launch with uh, All Right, All Right, All Right. Um, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. He's, Matthew. he's a legend. I mean, yeah. he, and he does everything from comedy to, to serious movies. Oh, man. Uh, uh, the Gentleman? Yeah. Damn, that was like a good that movie. movie. The well, gentleman where he was a like a um, in a company. Um, uh, it, it wasn't the Wolves of Wall Street. Okay, I was about. To I say. don't think it was. Was well, it? He was the one. But where it was like one of those rookie like that. numbers. Yeah, it's like that was Wolf of Wall Street. Street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I loved him in stuff like that where you know Leonardo DiCaprio is another one. Oh. Amazing. You know what's funny? I hated him as a young actor because, and I think that was cl- you know the typical when you're a young man, a young guy. And every girl that you wish you could date or you like <laughs> is all goo goo about some dude. You typically tend to go, ah, that guy's garbage. You know, and you used to do that with, uh, or we used to do that back in the day. We were immature. We'd do that with like uh, him and uh, <laughs> Brad Pitt I'm, and all those huge celebrity icons at the time. I know you haven't seen this, but Vampire Diaries, the guy who plays Damon, Ian, what, Summer Holden? Yeah, I say that, and yet we have the freaking bottle of whiskey that they have. We have it on our shelf. But Ian Summerholden, I hate that guy. I hate him. I don't know who he is. I don't see him enough. Yeah, well. It doesn't ring a bell on your he, he, He's stupid. He... All right, so apparently 
Ian Summerhold didn't like the idea that I was talking shit about him and he turned our camera off. <laughs> Not sure what happened there, but uh, just in case to check things, we'll go ahead and end the episode here. Well, we were we were at an ending point anyway. Yeah. We were in the final wrap up. So, so to, to to just close things up, uh, the Abina so the Abina so sipping sodas. So this one, it's not my favorite, but for someone who likes vanilla, like you were saying, it would be great. And yeah, the cherry one was much better for yeah, my for personal my taste too. Uh, flavor palette. Candlewood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was. So uh, we got two more to cedar try. Cedarwood. Cedarwood. Candlewood. It was candlewood. Yeah. All right, we got so candlewood. So. We got two more to try that we'll be trying over the next handful of episodes. So we'll, we'll make mention to it again. I'm sure. The candlewood uh, for sure is going to be in the fridge. Yeah. We're, I'm for sure going to buy more of those. Those were great. Maybe a couple more of these for, for some I mean, designated driver. People come here. Definitely nice time. to have at the bar Definitely for when we have nice. parties for people who don't drink alcohol, which we always have a few. Um, anyway. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and close out. Um, like we say before, like, comment, subscribe. Smash that bell. So you get all the notifications. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. So have a good one, guys. Peace out.